How do you refactor your Spring application to retrieve dynamic database credentials from Vault and refresh the application anytime those credentials change? In this demonstration, I'll show you what you need to do to refactor your Spring application to properly retrieve and inject secrets from Vault and then refresh with minimal disruption anytime those credentials expire. Vault uses a leasing system to issue dynamic database credentials. This means that each time you read a set of credentials from a dynamic secrets engine, the secret has a time to live and will expire after that time to live. In this case, this database username and password will expire after one minute. Anytime I read a new set of credentials from the secrets engine's API endpoint, I get a new set of usernames and passwords for the database. If you need help finding which database secrets engine or in general dynamic database secrets engine you're using, refer to your Vault administrator. They can help you identify the correct secrets engine mount as well as the API endpoint you'll need in order to read a new set of credentials. After you've determined the secrets engine that you're going to use as well as the time to live for the specific credential you want to read, you can refactor your application. The first thing you'll need to do is add a dependency in your Spring application to Spring Cloud Vault. The Spring Cloud Vault library injects credentials from Vault into configuration properties. For example, I can inject data source properties stored in Vault into the initial application properties. Since I'm using the database secrets engine, I'll also need to include a dependency to Spring Cloud Vault's database backend. This database backend allows the framework to properly inject credentials dynamically generated from Vault into the application. This is a little bit different than the key value secrets engine, which stores static secrets. The next thing you'll need to do is configure some application properties. The application properties will define how the Spring Cloud Vault library connects to Vault. The first thing you'll need to define is the Spring Cloud Vault URI. Refer to your Vault administrator team to determine which Vault server you should be referencing. The next important configuration you'll need to consider is the Spring Cloud Vault authentication method. In this case, I'm using the token-based authentication method. This is a simplistic way for me to demonstrate how your application should be refactored to connect to Vault. But there are many other authentication methods that allow your application to retrieve secrets from Vault without needing to pass an explicit token or any other credential. Refer to your Vault administrator team to identify which auth method you should be using and refer to the Spring Cloud Vault documentation for the proper configuration you'll need in order to define that authentication method. Optionally, if you're using Vault Enterprise or HTTP Vault, you'll need to define the Spring Cloud Vault namespace attribute. The Spring Cloud Vault namespace attribute segments your secrets away from another business unit or other applications. If you're using Vault Enterprise or HTTP Vault, your Vault administrator team may have set up a specific namespace for you. So refer to their documentation for additional information on how your namespace should be identified. Next, you'll need to set up a configuration import from Vault. Since Spring Cloud Vault can serve as a backend for configuration properties, you can define it as part of your Spring config import. You can chain additional configuration import locations as part of this declaration, but you will need to add the vault colon slash slash in order to define a vault server as a backend. Next, I've disabled the key value store backend for Spring Cloud Vault. Spring Cloud Vault will automatically scan a key value secrets engine for any configuration properties and inject them into the application. Since I am just demonstrating dynamic database secrets engines and not any static secrets that I've predefined as part of configuration properties within Vault KV, I'm going to disable this for now so I do not have scanning enabled. The next configuration you'll need to set up is the spring.cloud.vault.database.enabled true configuration. Refer to your Vault administrator to identify which database role that you'll need to use, as well as the backend 
API endpoint for your database secrets engine mount or any other dynamic secrets engine mount. This is going to be specific to the database secrets engine. So if you have other dynamic secrets engines that generate API tokens or certificates, refer to Spring Cloud Vault documentation to understand which attributes you'll need to set. Because in my demonstration, my time to live for my database secret is one minute, I have to do some tuning for some life cycle uh, regarding the renewal and expiry of my credential. There are additional lease renewal and expiry thresholds that you can tune yourself, especially if you have a very short time to live. If you have longer time to lives for your credentials, you may not need to tune these attributes. But since mine is about a two minute maximum time to live, meaning after two minutes, the credential will absolutely expire, I need to tune the min renewal threshold or the amount of time it takes for the application to identify that the credential needs to be renewed, as well as the expiry threshold, which is the amount of time the application needs in order to expire the credential. I need to define these on shorter intervals so that way the application can properly expire and renew the credentials appropriately. The expiration and renewal logic is happening in Spring Cloud Vault library, which means that it will count when the renewal must happen as well as when the expiry must happen. Finally, I'm going to configure the database URL in my application properties. Since I'm already injecting the application properties for the username and password through Spring Cloud Vault's database backend, I don't need to define them explicitly in application properties. Now that I've defined the application properties, let's refactor our application. The first thing you'll need to do is identify any beans linked to data sources or web clients that use the credentials. In this case, since I am connecting to a database from the application, I define a data source as a bean. You'll need to annotate each bean that is using the username or password or dynamic credential with the refresh scope annotation. This lets the Spring Framework know that the bean must be reloaded whenever an application context refresh is triggered. Anytime you have the data source bean or web client bean that connects to another API, you'll need to rebuild the client or data source. So in this case, I'm rebuilding the data source each time with a username and password that is defined in the Spring application properties. Remember, Spring Cloud Vault automatically injects the application properties into the framework, and these are going to be defined as part of the application properties. So I can retrieve the username and password each time and then rebuild the data source. Next, you'll need to add the refresh logic to your application. In this case, I want my refresh logic to monitor on any changes to the credentials endpoint regarding my database secrets. Spring Cloud Vault uses the Spring Vault underlying implementation in order to calculate leases and handle the injection of secrets into Spring configuration entries. As a result, you can use the Spring Vault library to monitor for lease events. In this case, I'm defining a secret lease container and adding a lease listener to monitor for any events on the credentials path for the database secrets engine. If the event happens to be an expiration event, I am going to issue an application context refresh. Because my underlying implementation for refresh references a data source that is using a Hikari data source, this refresh handles a graceful shutdown each time the data source needs to be rebuilt. If you're not using a data source that is going to be a Hikari data source, however, you may need to refer to documentation whether or not this is going to have a default handling with graceful shutdown. Furthermore, you can customize this logic a little bit more. If you find that you need more granular, a more granular approach to disconnecting your existing connections and you want to further minimize, minimize disruption because a refresh is causing more of a disruption than you expected, then you can update this logic to monitor on renewal events or other kinds of secret lease events. This means that you can tune the behavior of your application relative to how it needs to refresh 
any data sources or web client connections. Now that we've refactored our application to refresh each time the database credentials change, let's run the application and check out what it's going to do. When I first start the application, it's going to retrieve the initial username and password for the database from Vault. This is the Vault generated username as well as a unique password for the application. When I first run the application and run an API call against it, I should successfully connect to the database. Granted, the database will return an empty array because I have no entries in the table, but I should be able to properly authenticate to the database uh, and retrieve information. In the application, I've started a database connection pool and any subsequent connections to the database will use this pool. After about two minutes, my application should start shutting down any existing database connections. My application shut down any of the existing data sources using the application context refresh. Remember, because I'm using a Kari data source, it automatically handles the graceful shutdown of any connections. Next, the application refreshes the database credentials. The next time I issue an API call to the application, it will reconnect to the database with the new set of credentials. So now that I've connected again to the application, I've gotten my empty array again, which indicates that the application is still able to connect to the database properly. When I examine the logs, the application has retrieved a new username from Vault and started a new connection to the database with the new username and password. I didn't need to refresh the application or restart the application manually. Instead, my application is handling the refresh event on its own and rebuilding the data source with the new usernames and new passwords. The old username and password will be revoked by Vault, so the application does not need to handle revocation. It needs to just calculate and retrieve the new username and password each time the expiration is almost up. If you have more questions, on how to refactor your application, refer to our tutorial online.